and you will also note because of dynamic similarity the CD model is equal to CDP. This is an outcome of dynamic similarity because we have shown that Reynolds number if it is identical then because only the viscous and inertial effects are important so the drag coefficients will also be identical. Mind you the coefficients are identical but not the drags ok. All right, so if I plug that uh, these expressions over here then this would imply so P m by P p would actually imply that uh, so I can I can get rid of these and I would get rho m u m cube l m square divided by rho prototype u prototype cube and l prototype square ok. If I uh, put in the values then I am going to find out that uh, this P prototype by P m would turn out to be 0 0.127 if I plug the values. So the bottom line is that uh, I would actually spend more power in towing the model ok. So uh, although it is a 1 20th scale model but because I am towing it in water and you will notice the speed is larger it is 15.7 meter per second as opposed to 10 meter per second. So P model is larger than P prototype ok which is a little bit surprising but that is what it is. So that concludes example number 1 ok. Uh, I want to show you now another example uh, which uh, will illustrate uh, similar ideas. The next example that I wish to talk about is about a pump. So let me write down the statement that a pump capable of lifting 5 meter cube per second so that is the volume flow rate of water against a head off Two hundred fifty meter at five hundred RPM, so that is the RPM of the pump is to be designed. So, to test that, a small model is being made. So, a one to ninth. scale model is fabricated and tested with the same fluid which is the water but this time the head is reduced the pressure head. So, this is against a pressure head of 250. In fact, I should simply say head not the pressure head. So, against a head of 10 meter. So first at what speed should it run by speed we mean RPM and secondly the volume flow rate.
okay so the model uh, the prototype is with 5 meter cube per second and the rpm is 500 uh, number what are these quantities for the model so we will neglect viscous losses and gravity effects within the pump so first question that we need to answer is what are the relevant similarity parameters okay so so that that's the problem statement and here I would like to first ask that what similarity parameters should I be worried about. So let us go one by one. We are told the viscous losses inside the pump are not important. Okay. So if viscous forces are not important, then of course Reynolds number is not important. we do not have to worry about it. So, Euler number is important, so pressure is important, pressure is important and therefore Euler must be considered. The flow through the pump is unsteady okay, because actually it has moving parts and the uh, rpm is given as 500 so therefore the flow is unsteady in pump which actually implies that struhal number which relates the frequency that also must be considered okay so this is an interesting problem where we do not have to worry about the reynolds number and for dynamic similarity, we must ensure that these two parameters, the Euler number and the Struhal number, they should be identical between the model and prototype. So if you recollect, we had defined the Euler number as the ratio of inertia forces to the pressure forces. So it was something like rho u square by p and the Struhal number was something like a frequency, so it was inertia forces and the unsteady forces, so frequency times a length scale and a speed. Okay, so these two numbers must be matched between the model and prototype for us to get dynamic similarity. So let us uh, make the same kind of uh, table that we made earlier. So I will do it for the prototype and for the model. Okay. So let us talk about first the flow rate Q. So for the prototype it is QP which is given to me as 5 meter cube per second and in fact for the model this is one thing that I need to find out then I need to worry about the frequency f. So for the prototype uh, I already know that the uh, some kind of rotation rate so I will denote it by omega for the prototype that is given as 500 rpm. So f is related to omega the angular frequency okay. and this is again something that I need to get out of the system. Let us talk about the length scale L. The length scale for the prototype is told to me that it is a 1 ninth scale model. So the prototype would be uh, you know this is given to me LP and for the model it is actually LP by 9. Okay. I can talk about uh, the head 
the pressure head for example, this was for the prototype it is given as 250 meter and for the model this is 10 meter. Rho is the density for the prototype which is rho water okay, 10 to the third kilogram per meter cube and the same fluid is being used for the model so that is also rho water. So I am not writing the numerical value because we do not need it okay, but if you want to write a numerical value you are free to do that in the end it should not matter great. So now let us get on by matching the Euler number and the Struhal number. So first the Euler number for the model should be same as Euler number for prototype for the dynamic similarity and this would imply that the rho of model times u model square by p of model is rho of prototype u of prototype square by p of prototype. And from this I can infer that u prototype by u model is so, so these would cancel out because I am using the same fluid. So this would turn out to be pp by pm those are the pressures and then a square root okay. And we already know this is 250 meter this is 10 meter square root of that. So I get a number 5. So the velocity uh, for the prototype is actually 5 times that of the model. Great. Now let us work out what does the similarity with respect to the Struhal number gives us and this would imply that if I look at omega. So I could replace this f with uh, the angular speed on both sides for the model and prototype. So omega for the model times the length scale for the model divided by the u for the model should be equal to omega for the prototype, length for the prototype and u for the prototype. I already know the scaling between um and up. Okay. I already know the scaling between the length scales. So from this I can infer what is the scaling for the model and that would turn out to be um by up times lp by lm times omega p. And if I plug these in then this is one fifth u model to u prototype this is a ninth scale and this is omega p which is actually equal to 500 rpm. So if you do the arithmetic this turns out to 9 by 5 times 500 so 900 rpm. Okay. So you must spin the pump the model pump at 900 rpm so that you get dynamic similarity. Okay. So we have already ensured geometric similarity and by ensuring uh, the model speed or the speed of water through the model and the spin rate of the pump uh, the model pump now the dynamic similarity is ensured. So what would be the flow rate? So the flow rate as you know the Q for the prototype would be the area the cross sectional area of the pump times the average flow speed through it. Okay. So I could write this as let us say pi dp square by 4 times the speed through it which is up and similarly Q model would be pi d model square by 4 times model. 
I already know what is the flow rate through my prototype. Okay, that's that's five meter cube per second, and I need to estimate what is QM. So uh, I could look at what is QP by QM, and that you can see is simply dp by dm whole squared times up by um. So if you work these out, uh, the dp by dm is 1 ninth, it's a ninth scale model and up by um is here 5 and therefore so this is, uh, so this would imply that my Q model would be simply, uh, okay I have made a mistake here sorry, uh, the prototype is, so this is actually 9 and uh, <coughs> UP by UM is of course 5 alright. So Q model is Q prototype divided by this quantity 9 square times 5 and you can work it out this would be about 5 by 405 meter cube per second which is 0 0.0123 meter cube per second okay. Let us now look at a, a problem where the modeling was going to be a little bit more complicated okay. So far I have given you examples where you apply the rules of dynamic similarity and everything works out. I now wish to give you an example from real life, in fact I have uh, I have encountered it myself uh, during my experiments at the National Wind Tunnel Facility uh, where you are unable to do dynamic similarity okay and then how do you model in those situations. So we are going to call that as incomplete similarity, incomplete dynamic similarity. So let me set it up for you with an example. So this is from a real life example but I have changed the number and I am not disclosing to you uh, the organization for which these experiments were done. So consider an aircraft. of length 10 meter and wingspan of uh, 15 meter to fly So actually the aircraft would usually fly at 30,000 feet or higher uh, but uh, if it is a jet aircraft, it's a if it is a piston propeller aircraft, it may fly at something like 5,000 feet if it is not pressurized and if the cabin is pressurized that it can go to a higher altitude. But to simplify things, I will keep it at sea level and let us say at 100 meter per second. So it is still quite, uh, quite fast. It is powered. by two turbo propeller engines each propeller has a dia of 1 meter and RPM is 2000. So I have just rounded them off to make calculations easy for us. So tests are to be conducted in a wind tunnel of a one tenth scaled model so find 
a the test speed b the rpm of the propeller and c the ratio of drag of prototype to model okay so imagine that there is an aircraft that is being designed okay and these are the dimensions 10 meter uh, is the length the wing span is about 15 meter and uh, 100 meter per second two engines the diameter of the propeller is 1 meter each and the rpm is 2000 and now we need to conduct a test of this inside a wind tunnel now the wind tunnel test section uh, may not be large enough to incorporate the full aircraft so it actually depends on what is the size of the wind tunnel okay the bigger the size of the wind tunnel uh, larger can be your model and if you have a larger model it has two advantages one is that uh, as you know the reynolds number is directly proportional to the length scale so if i have a larger model i can actually uh, model a larger reynolds number okay effectively the second more important thing is that when you scale down a model then you will lose lot of geometric details so suppose my aircraft is going to take off and i have these wiper blades uh you know on the windshield of the aircraft and when i reduce the model size by a factor of let's say 10 or 20 or 100 depending on the size of my tunnel then i will lose all these geometric details and therefore the data that i get uh, for the model testing may not relate to the prototype okay so therefore the larger the model the better off you are but of course as we discussed the power required is usually cube of the speed okay and the size of the tunnel if it is large okay uh, you can imagine that a larger size tunnel would require huge power and sometimes that power may not be available not to mention the infrastructure costs okay so that said let's go ahead with the analysis uh, so let me draw for you uh, the picture of the aircraft and that would give us so let's say this is the tail plane so i'm drawing a very and this could be my wing 